Hi, in this video, I am going to show you how to perform uh, a, a, the clay nearest neighbor classification in R. Before we go into doing the classification in R, let's first understand what this uh, algorithm is all about and how do we apply this algorithm to sort of uh, classify data. So here is an example. We have got two types of data. Uh, the brown circle represent one type of data and the green circle uh, represent another type of data. Now given a data point, so this is the given data point, how do we know that uh, which group this data point belongs to? Okay, so that's essentially is the idea. So we find it out in two ways. First, finding out k nearest neighbor, k nearest nearest neighbors. And the second case, uh, use the um, what you call as uh, majority count. Okay, so first one is find out k nearest neighbor and k could take any value. Okay, it could be 1, 2 or 3. Let's assume that k equal to 3 and I'll tell you uh, how many, uh, what exactly should be the value of k uh, when we build the model. So for instance, let's assume that k equal to 3. So we find out uh, first, uh, what are the closest uh, three circles uh, to the uh, new circle or the, for the circle for which we want to predict, right? So the closest ones are these ones, right? So how do we find it out? We, we use Euclidean distance to find it out that which one has the uh, closest ones. Now, next one is using the majority count. The majority count says that there are, you know, out of the three circles, two of them are green and just one is a brown. And the majority said that it's a green. Hence, the new data point or the new circles given to us is also a green circle because that's the majority one. Okay. So that essentially is the theory behind, um, you know, a K nearest neighbor algorithm. Okay, so the estimation that it happens is just through, you know, taking the average of that. Okay, taking the average of the, you know, uh, the majority, uh, average of the majority for each one of these observations. And, you know, to whatever number of, uh, whatever number of uh, observation you have, you have a predicted value accordingly. And we'll see that in R. Okay, so, we'll, uh, first uh, run the library so we need to uh, run the library class because that's where we have the knn algorithm and that's what we are going to use we'll use the data sets uh, s market uh, what is known as a stock market um, stock market data if you have seen the video on logistic regression uh, that's where also we have used this data to predict sort of how uh, whether uh, the stock market is going up or down. So for those of you who haven't seen the data, let me show it to you. So we have got data for stock market. We have got data for stock market year, the lag of uh, the stock, uh, you know, return, um, the lag of the stock return, and we have got five lags. Lags are nothing but uh, you know uh, the values for the previous period. Okay, for instance, stock price for today uh, will have a lag for stock price of yesterday, and and so on. Okay, lag one is just you know day one day lag. This is two days lag, and so on. And we have got volume of the stock, uh, and then we have got the direction. That means whether the stock is moving up or down, and that's our target variable. So we need to predict what is the uh, probability that the stock price will move up or move down okay so it's a binary classification problem with us and we'll use the knl algorithm to classify data into two groups moving up or moving down stock price or stock return moving up or moving down so that's the idea so we'll see how the data looks like um, so let's see how the data uh, looks like. So here is the data. We have got ups and down as the target variable, and we have got these respective stock, uh, you know, returns and the years. Okay. So before we start the modeling, we'll uh, first, uh, you know, divide the sample with us. Or divide the data into two groups. One is the training data, the other one is test data. 
Um, so how do we get it? We have got uh, data for five years from 2001 to 2005. So the idea is to get uh, data for uh, training. Um, uh, so the training data should be for 2001 to 2004 and the uh, holdout sample or the validation sample should be for the data 2005. Um, and as you know that this is required to be done because uh, as a standard practice we you build a model using uh, training data and then you test your model in a uh, validation sample right so that's the reason why uh, we we have you know two two kinds of sample model. and you know they are all mutually exclusive in the sense that um, none of these observations are common in both the data sets uh, in this type of uh, so this type of uh, you know division of data into based on time periods is known as out time validation okay so that's just one you know technical term that we use um, all right so we'll take training data which is you know less than 2005 so from 2001 to 4 we'll take that as the training sample and we'll take only lag 1 and lag 2 as our independent or explanatory variable we won't take other variables the reason why I'm not going to take uh, the other variables is because I have seen uh, in some of the previous model that I have built and you can also watch this video on my channel where these variables haven't been uh, very useful to us okay so that's why I'm not uh, taking into consideration these variables you can of course go ahead and other use these variables and see by yourself that whether these variables are also uh, important for the model or not okay I'm just ignoring it for the simplicity purpose because the idea of, uh, of course uh, in this particular session is to see how to run uh, the k nearest uh, neighbor algorithm and the um, you know the variable selection is secondary to us in this particular session but it is very important for a real-time uh, model building process so I'm going to take the training data based on uh, the uh, based on what we have selected uh, previously we'll take the first four years as the training data and we'll use the c bind function just to take uh, the lag one and lag two and remember i'm just taking the uh, explanatory variables okay separately i'll use the target variables so target variable is direction that i'll take separately so i'll take only the um, I'll take only the uh, explanatory variables in the training set. Similarly, I'll also take the uh, explanatory variables in the test set for uh, for 2005, right? So this is for 2001 uh, to 4, and we're going to use this. Okay, and we'll also run it for 2005, which is going to be the test data. And we'll also use, or we'll also use a variable to, uh, you know, sort of uh, get the training sample for the target variable. Normally, you will find in other algorithms that you use both the target and exploratory variable in the same data. But here we are using two different uh, data because that's the way the KNL algorithm, um, you know, has been, uh, you know, has been there. I mean, the syntax is there. So we'll see that's, uh, you know, something that is a prerequisite. In KNL algorithm uh, or the KNN procedure in R. Okay, so we also get that from the uh, data set S market and we'll use the train um, as the subset. Okay, so now we have the target variables that's in direction and we have got the uh, explained, uh, you know, explanatory variables in S market train which for training data. And for S market test, we uh, of course have uh, explanatory variable for testing data. Now you might wonder why don't we have direction for test data? Because we don't need that. Do we need? No. Only we need that for you know validation purpose while you know creating the confusion matrix, and we'll get that at that point of time. Okay. For building model, that's not required. But let's do that because why do we you know do that? At that point of time, so let's also have uh, the uh, testing target variable. Okay, so that's the way we. So we just use minus of trend, which says that in you know just take all data points which are not in 
uh, trim. Okay. All right. Then we'll use seed actually. The reason why we are going to use a seed because we uh, KNN algorithms actually use, use a certain kind of procedure that will produce different result. So just to make sure that the result is uh, can be uh, you know repeated uh, later on, so it can be uh, you know found. It can be uh, you know uh, it can be um, you know reproduced. We need to use a seed, and that's we do all the times whenever we need to reproduce the same result. So let's first see what the dimension of uh, our training and testing data. Okay, so our training data has got 998 and two variables. Our testing test data we've got 1249 data points and two variables. Okay, so we only have explanatory variable in our training and test data because target variable has been taken separately. Now, how do we, uh, you know, run the k nearest near neighbor algorithm? Well, in k nearest neighbor algorithm in R, you don't need to sort of build the model and uh, test the model in a separate way. So you do both at the same time. Okay, so KNN is the uh, you know sort of a function that we use to uh, you know build the model for KNN, uh, build the model uh, to classify, and at the same time we also test the model using the test data. Okay, so we that you know normally you have seen in other models like decision tree or logistic regression, we build the model first and then we go on to test it, but that's not the case here. So we use the pred variable where we'll you know keep uh, the results so this is the function knn and we are using the uh, training data here and we're also using the test data here and then the target variable okay so this will have all the explanatory variable for training this will have all the explanatory variables for test and this will have the target variable for training for test we don't need a tar target variable because that's what we are going to predict so we don't need and k could take any value we'll start with one and let's see how the predictions are so these are the arguments so let's run this so we have been able to run it so we can actually see what's there in pred okay so in pred we won't get any statistics now if you're familiar with the theory of k nearest neighbor and we just you know had a glance through uh, what the theory is uh, k nearest neighbor is, is a non-parametric way of classifying your data. So what do you mean by non-parametric way is that we do not get estimates as such. You might have seen estimates in linear regression, in logistic regression, in decision, uh, uh, you know, in, in some of these other uh, regression-based algorithms. But k nearest neighbor is a purely non-parametric. That means you do not get estimates. You do not get beta parameters, beta naught beta 1 and so on. You do not get uh, something like R square or C statistics and, and so on because this is not a statistical estimation per se. It's a pretty mechanical way of just finding the nearest data points uh, and taking the majority count. Okay, so that's uh, non-parametric. That means you do not uh, sort of assume any distribution of data and do the estimation. You just take uh, data points nearby the test data points and find out uh, the class of the data okay so in the uh, result you only get the final predicted value that's why you have only ups and downs so uh, we have got ups and downs for all the test data points so this data that you can see on the screen is the data for the uh, test okay so you remember we had 1243 data points right in our test data and that's exactly uh, the numbers that we have got here. Uh, we have got 1243 data points for which we have got ups and downs, whether the stock bias is going to go up or go down. Now let's do how well is, is the prediction. Okay, so let's tab tabulate uh, by using a, a, a confusion matrix. So uh, we have the predicted value in PRED and we have the actual value that we just, you know, uh, we just uh, assigned previously so that's in direction dot 2005 that means we have the target variable for 
the year 2005. That's our test target variable, right? So we have got predicted and we have got actual. So this is actual and we have the predicted value over here. So when we table it, we found out that, um, okay, 534 of them uh, down is matching with down and up is matching with up is 583 and so that these are uh, the diagonal elements which are matching and the off diagonal elements are 68 and 58 so let's see what is the accuracy okay what percentage of so how do we find it out so we just take the mean of predicted equal to um, actual okay so I don't know which one did we run. We run this one, right? Yes. So let's take wherever we have predict uh, predicted value is equal to the actual value. That's matching, right? And what is the percentage of accuracy? Okay. So let's find out the accuracy. So the accuracy is 89.89% uh, in this case. Okay. So accuracy is very good in this case. Okay. Let's use k equal to 2. And let's see whether this accuracy is improving or not. Okay. So previously it was k equal to 1. Let's take k equal to 2. And let's also tabulate it and find the accuracy. Okay. So the accuracy is going down. So now it is 71%. So with k equal to 1, we had a very good accuracy. But with k equal to 2, it has gone down. Let's see how, uh, how it performs when k equal to 3. So the syntax remains same, you simply change k equal to 3 and then let's run the model and then we are tabulating it and finding out the mean. I am doing all the three steps uh, in just one go. Now it's 71% again, right? There is hardly any change. Uh, with k equal to 4, so this is where k equal to 4, let's see. Okay, it is further down, right? It is now 65%. So initially we had 80, what is that? 89%, uh, it has now come down to 65%. Now if we increase K, the classification rate is going down. That's what we have found here. But it won't be the same everywhere. You know, you could have different experiences with different data. So it's all depend, depends on the distribution of the classes of data. Now here in our case, we have found that k equal to 1 is actually giving us the best result. And that's exactly what we are going to use for the final prediction or, or for prediction for the new set of data. So for this particular data, k equal to 1 is the, uh, you know, sort of the best uh, k value. So that's the way you, you know, sort of uh, use the KNN algorithm to classify your data. So the key thing here is uh, that uh, finding out the optimal value of k. Now, once that is known, you just have to, uh, you know, use a, a formula or use the function and, you know, do the prediction. That's exact. So the exercise that we have done is just to find out what is the optimal value of k, right? And k and algorithm can well be used for classification as well as for regression. See, in another video, we'll see how we can use k and algorithm for regression uh, model building process. Okay. Thank you.